This is the unboxing. Watch out for the nuts. Way. Not bad. Looks bloody fancy. <laughs> Don't drop it. Try. Don't drop it. <laughs> so what Raymond's trying to work out is how we're going to install it now. He's the man. It's coming together. Good. Josh is inside. <laughs> hey Josh. <laughs> anyway, that's the three batteries, which is the 36 volt system. Just cutting cables and connecting 36 volt to Minn Kota. Right. And then we're good. Why is there no power? Sorry? Why is there no power? Why is there no power? Hmm? Oh no, you're the power guy. I'm the power guy. Yeah. Plug in, plug in. Ever. We have power. Ready? You know what you're doing there, boss? Any batteries in the controller? When all else fails, read the instructions. I can't read. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Well, we're at the fix-it shop and we're going to find out why the encoder is not working. Well, we believe that it's something else because we don't know what's going on. But we do know that we replaced that GPS sensor that tells the encoder, that thing, the orientation of the head. So we've installed it incorrectly and it needs to go on the top. So that's the first problem. So there's the pro over there. He's just getting ready. He's having a coffee, getting himself psyched up. Um, Rusty just give me some important information here. One second, he's gonna explain it to you. So why don't you like lithium batteries with Mankotas? Our uh, lithium batteries are okay, but if you run them on above setting number seven, for a long period of time, the armature housings run hot, which can damage the armature in the internals. So lithiums are good, but they are probably too good, and they make them run hot at the upper end of their power curve. So what you're saying is the Minn Kota hasn't kept up with the lithium battery technology? Well, because they've been out for a long time, um, they're a bit old school in that department, but they are getting to it and making them more compatible with it. Okay. So lithium batteries are quite okay, but just not in the upper power curve. All right, so you heard that from Rusty. Rusty, this is from Rusty's Marine, by the way. So uh, this is Rusty. Get out, mate. So yeah, so he's going to go through and explain. This is Jamie. He's a tech guy, knows everything about everything to do with encoders, hopefully. So we're um, just investigating what's going on. So we may have found a faulty encoder. That's the 50-50 for us, usual, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, so we might get another unit and chuck it on and see what happens, hopefully. What do you reckon? We'll give it a crack. Jamie, you said that this is the first time in all of the Minn Kotas you've installed, this is the first one, because we're renowned for this, first one that you've ever had a problem out of the box. Out of the box, yeah. A couple more things to check. 50-50, always. First one? Is it the first one? It's the first one. <laughs> it had to be yours. It had to be mine. <laughs> there you go. This is how you manually deploy the encoder. So you unscrew that little screw there. Take this screw out. So this is so that if we're on the water and the, the encoder doesn't want to go back and you've got this deployed in the water, this is how you do it. And then we just lift this knob up. Awkward. Until that disengages. So that disengages there. Oh, I see, yep. So that black thing was on that other one there. So you can manually buy that. Yep, okay. Yep. That cool. That allows you to do that. So that normally that'll be in that position there where it is now. Yeah, so you just remove that screw and then that'll allow you to go back. And then you can pull on this lever here, stainless steel. On the stainless steel one on the side? Yep. And yep. then that will allow the motor, trim motor to disengage. And then right. you can pull that right up. Okay, cool. And then that goes back up over there. Yep. yep. And then you just strap the motor so that it can't go anywhere. Um, and that's, the motor that's the, yeah, that's right, how okay. to manually stow. So when the you say strap the motor, because like, the leg's going to be where? The leg will be out, out and then it'll come back onto here, but right. there's nothing to actually hold it right. in place. So, so that means as soon as you do that, tie it up. Tie it up. Don't use it again until you get home. Nope. Bring it into Bring it in. us. Yep. We fix it. Yep. Cool. So that's the way you do it. Yep. So make sure you, after you manually deploy it, back in its position, make sure you, you tie it up, otherwise it'll go back out again and then you're really in shit. It'll be hanging down. So, not a good idea. 
All right, so that's a good thing. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, so we've uh, put it back together again. Well, I haven't, Jamie has. We're just gonna see if it's gonna work. Hopefully, it's just that. Um, Jamie put a bit of grease on this shock absorber here, just to, that it wasn't from the factory either. So he's just put some extra on there. Here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> Here it goes. All right, please. Pressing the button up here. The go button. You need to press it three times. Uh, yep, yeah, press it three times and that's just doing a park reset. Yep. So that it all lands where it is. Oh, that's pretty close. Alright. I've done all the checks and tests and now we should be operational. I just want to make sure it's going up and down. position done it's back on all good all right it's actually working huh well we'll show you the next bit now you were saying what sorry what you saying right, so I'm just gonna put a bit of grease on the arm on a switch in here right basically this is the one that tells the um, computer whether it's deployed or not right so what can happen is it gets a little bit of salt in there in mm -hmm. the bush that's holding this arm on the switch and it doesn't disengage it so yeah. it thinks the motor's always deployed so right. you'll stow it and then you won't be able to deploy it because it thinks it's already down right so you pull that off that's over here i'll just show you the inside this little arm here yeah. just need to make sure that's nice and free and moving so if for some weird reason the motor thinks that it's um, deployed when it's actually stowed chances are it's this arm stuck all the way across like this oh yeah so yep. you can actually get your hand in there and just try and flick this that little lever there back and see if that fixes it yeah um, if not then you yeah, need to pull that right. apart and grease it as you said but now um because the older types didn't grease it um, yes. at the factory so that's why if you've got an older one um it may pay to have a look at that and just put a bit of grease on there yep. um because that'll help it when you're in the ocean and also you said something like with the um, cleaning of it, you said don't put anything on it, yeah, just, just wash it down. Soaking water. Yeah. And where's the main parts you're going to be careful of to wash it down? Nowhere. No, just everything. No, it's all waterproof, it's all obviously designed to get wet. So yeah. So do you wash the arm with something or do you? Just go right over with good soaking water, make sure all the salt's off it. Right. Okay, so and don't spray anything on there or? Nah, don't need no. to worry about it. Okay. Just when the guys that are servicing your encoders when your motor outboard comes in for service, get them to grease these couple yep. of things. And How often should you service the encoders? Every time your outboard gets serviced. So every 100 hours? Yep, get them in, get them looked at, yep. make sure that it's all greased and cleaned and operating properly. Okay. That's all you need to worry about. All right, so that's the greasing part of the encoder. So if you haven't done that, check that out. So Jamie uses this grease, which is the high performance extreme grease. He says use that on the encoder because that is the shit. That's the best stuff. Nice and sticky. Nice and sticky. Away. And it stays on better than normal grease. So use this shit, because it's the bomb. So what we're gonna show you uh, in a second is what you do when the encoder has a brain fart. So we're just gonna, Jamie's just gonna set it up um, so you can see. He's setting it up for me to deploy it in a certain way so it doesn't damage the encoder when it comes back up, so it doesn't hit the side of my boat or whatever. Um, he'll explain it to you in a second. All right, this is the park reset. Okay. So things are starting to go a bit weird. This just lets the computer relearn where the trim settings are and also where the, the angle is that you want the, the motor to be in cool. when, you, when you stow it. All right, First so what do we do? Make sure that this surface is straight with this surface. So this surface over there. Yep because that's where it's, it's going to want to pull up and yep, in bring line. It. So you can just rotate it to make it wherever we need it. So then we rotate it to where, where you want it. Yep. yep. And then over here we go, okay, power off. Yep. So we go power on, it beeps, give it a couple of seconds, and then one, two, three. Okay. 
and that'll bring it all the way up until it hits a stop. That knows where it is then. Right. It'll come down a touch, and that's all set, ready to go. Okay, so when, what do you do from here then? Operate as normal. Operate as normal, so right. From there, we can then, obviously we want to bring the motor down a bit because it'll hold itself there, so we can go trim. Yep. And trim the motor down. Mm -hmm. Bring it down to the depth that we want. Right. Easy as that. Okay. So where do you suggest we should have the, the Ming Koto on this boat? Because you know, the, the way that the hull is and... So yep. is it just a matter of... So in, in the stowed position, we're wanting the motor hanging out with the prop this side, just because there's not enough room on the other side to spin it. Yep. Some boats will be a little bit different where you might want it to be on, on the opposite on side. side. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so when you press, say, uh, where you want to go, which is spot lock or something like that, where will yep. this where will this be? Oh, for the trim. Yeah. Trim, you want it all the way down. All the way down? Because it's out in the open ocean, it's going to be going up and down right. in the swells. So we want to set that all the way down. Okay. So we can should be able to have enough clearance here to do it yep. on the trailer. And it just touches, it's fine. So that's all the way down. Right. And so that's what you have to do every time? No. Nope. Every time that you um, stow it and then go to deploy again, it'll go back to the last setting. Right, okay. So if you had it set deep, that's where it's right. going to go. If you Otherwise, then you do back, go back and do this reset again over here. Is that right? No. No? Only, only if you're having problems. If it's doing right. something weird, try that. It's an easy, easy, easy try. Yeah. Yeah, it could fix it. Right. Yeah. So turn it off, wait a couple of seconds, turn it back on, press that button three times. Within two seconds, I think it is. Yep. And then it'll, it'll go to that deploy position, reset the arm of the encoder to where you want it, and then what happens then? All good to go. All good to go. I'll use it as normal. Yep. Stow. So now we're going to go back to the stow position. And hopefully it goes back to where it should be. There we go. She's there. Bonza. Thanks, Easy. mate. We'll wait for the next thing. Gonna run through the manual deploy again just to make sure manual that stow. stow is that manual stow. <laughs> Sorry, not deploy. <laughs> all right, here we go. So this is if shit happens. Right, oh. So if it's stuck all the way down and you want to be able to lift it back up so you can travel home if there is a problem, what we need to do is take this side cover off. There's just the two screws either side. Yep. So we want to remove the screw on this black arm. And this is going to happen all on water, by the way, so... Don't drop anything. No. <laughs> yeah, keep that safe. Put that there for now. And we just need to flick this black arm up. Oh, I added to it as well, mate, so that's all right. There we go. All so right, it's now so disengaged there. So that's the two parts that come apart. Black one stays on the top and the the yep. little um, other one that's spoke is inside that plastic cover comes apart. So then now... Now over this side, we just need to remove, and we'll pull out this stainless arm to disengage the trim motor. And that can then lift. Yep. Push up on this bar here. And then oh, for the uh, yeah, yep, release. Just to release yep. that. And then we can push that up. That's it. Make sure it's up on the ramps. Up on the ramps now. And that there is not strap. actually locked in, you have to tie it up. Yep, so then just strap that to something. Yes. Just strap it up to, to there or, or across the front, whatever yeah. you've got to tie it up. And then that's Otherwise like, it'll just come out. So yep, you've got to, because now you've done that, leave it in that position till you get home, take it to your service provider and uh, that, then deal with it. Yep, easy. Good, alrighty. There you go guys, so that's the manual, manual stow for if uh, the shit is a fan on the water. So that's what you do. All right, that's that one. So to deploy the motor, you press this button here twice. Then it gets into the memory position or wherever you left it with the little bit we showed you just before. And then to anchor yourself to wherever you want, press the anchor position and then it holds you there. Hopefully. Yeah. Time will tell. All right, so what uh, Jamie's doing now is he's uh, repositioning the GPS heading sensor. heading sensor. There we go. I'll just show you that. Um, look, we, um, Jamie didn't install it. We did, so uh, that's uh, on us. 
Um, there is an arrow that Jamie will show you on here. So that needs to be. There is. So basically, we had it like that. Yep, up against the boat, thinking that was the direction, but it's not. So how you have to have it is on top of the boat, and Point with forward. the arrow facing forwards. the Minn Kota or forwards. No. Facing no, forwards. sorry, facing the front of the boat. Is that correct? Yep, so then it knows which way the, is front forwards on the boat. Right, okay. So be, yeah, that way. And soon, um, after Jamie re-connects um, that up, he's gonna show us, um, in due course, um, how to calibrate the Minn Kota before you go out and use it, uh, which is also a very important thing, so calibration. Coming up next. So what we're gonna do is download the app go through your phone so that's what he's doing at the moment which one is it so it's iPilot link through oh, your iPod. app store iPilot what is it iPilot yeah there we go that's the one you want for this model or iPilot link is for the iPilot link models all right and what's the difference in those two the iPilot link is the one that'll link up to a hummingbird sounder right mm. which we don't have <laughs> sim red bad boy over there so anyway we're just uh, linking that up at the moment now, unfortunately, I didn't, wasn't here for the calibration, but um, apparently um, follow the instructions because it's very important before you actually go on to the water that your Minn Kota has to be calibrated. So basically, it's, uh, what do you do? So we want to calibrate the heading sensor so it knows which way the boat is, the boat's pointing, and also which way the motor points. So you just go through the menus, and you'll see sensor cowl and then sensor offset. So just want to run through them too. Right. Okay, so that's what you do because it's too difficult to really explain, so you have to actually go through it to work it out. Hey, it's the man, hey. Rusty. That's Rusty, yeah. He sometimes comes to work, yeah. When I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're still waiting, but we'll uh, be back. Software update. Yeah, so I'm through the encoder. Yeah, it's just come up and said that there's new software available, so it's just running through all that. Okay, that's gonna stop it. Boy the Minn Kota. And then you just got to hold the pair button while it's searching for a Bluetooth. Okay, yep. Once it picks so it up, you, you deployed it, Bluetooth. You go through your Bluetooth menu. Pair it on your, for your... Press and hold the pair button. Right. And then touch on the iPilot when it shows up. And that goes on, on your phone. phone. Yep. Right. Okay, so we we'll wait for the next thing. Okay, so now we've updated the Minn Kota. We've got the... iPilot app. iPilot app on the phone. And the, the now the other ones, the controller is updated as well. So everything's updated. Got it on your phone as well as a backup. That's a good yep. idea. Hey? Mm. Yep, all those files, you can use that. So, extra backup. Awesome. And also, if you do it to your phone, that means you can actually update the encoder at the same time. So, everything is up to date. All set, ready to go. Out on the water. That's it. We'll uh, show you, hopefully soon, how it works in the water. All right, guys. See you soon. What Russ is going to do, g'day mate. How you go, mate? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so what he's going to do, he's going to explain to us about the lithium battery situation versus the AGMs because um, there is a bit of a knowledge you need to know which I didn't know. So Russ is going to let us know right now. All right, hi hey, guys. Mate. Yeah, with lithium batteries on Minkotas. So yes, you can use lithium batteries on Minkotas. They last well and they're very good. There's a but there. If you run lithium, on setting number seven and higher for a prolonged use, the armatures run hot on the motors. So where's the armature? What are you, what are you talking about? The armature here. Right, the that bit there. What yep. you'd call the gearbox. Yep. But that's the armature housing. Yep. Um, it is a brush motor. You're right. So on normal AGM batteries or deep cycle batteries, they're fine. Um, but prolonged use with lithium batteries above setting number seven will make them run hot. So don't run them at seven for a long period for of time? For long periods. It's so okay. what is the best, what's the best one to run it on? Okay, so it all depends on conditions because the Minn Kota will sense the load and will adjust automatically according to conditions. So if you get a windy day yep. with a bit of drift, it will want to run on a higher setting. Right. Okay, so that's where you've got to be a bit careful on these windy days with lithium batteries not to run it too long on a higher setting. Okay. Because that will happen, it can cook the armature housing. Right, okay. Yeah. So just making sure that you run at that level, but not for a long time that's if you right. need it. Yeah. yeah, okay. So until such time as a brushless motor comes out, that's that's designed to be more friendly with lithium batteries, then that's what we have to do. Right. So this is a 2020-21 model? Yep. 
Right, okay, so the new ones are supposedly coming out. Well, they're working on it, so when they come out, that'll be good. But just got to be a little bit careful with lithium. Lithium is all the go because they're lighter and they're great, but you just got to be a little bit careful. Okay. Yep. All right, so the AGM batteries, um, we believe, well, from my understanding, is that you don't um, use any more than 50, 60% of the AGM batteries. You can't load them up any more than that, otherwise you wreck the battery, is that right? Or Well, you can drain them right down as long as they're recharged straight away, but if they're drained and left sort of half drained, you can damage the battery. Right. Okay, so... So if you happen to have to go below 50%, get on to recharging straight away. Yeah, I mean, if you do it on a consistent basis, you can do damage. Right. But if it's just every now and then, that shouldn't have any effect. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, Rusty, thanks very much for your time, buddy. No I know problems. you're a very busy man. That's it. <laughs> Gotta go. All right, so now we're going to test this thing out tomorrow, hopefully. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is our maiden boy with the Minn Kota. We're going to uh, see if it actually works. So let's turn it on. Here we go. Hoping it's going to go. Is it going to go? It is going to go. All righty. All right, hold us there, hold us there. What, stop? Yep, that's it. And then you go you anchor, and then anchor's on, and that's it. And that's it. And now watch this little guy. Now, this what guy he here should hold us here. Watch what he does. And he's just gonna kick. We've come out, 25 k's, and we're catching, <laughs> this is what I got. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hey, bottom mate. <laughs> Thank you, Vexed.